well, it's the 22nd of June, which happens to be the 25th anniversary of these two people, lovely people that we've got stuck with us, Gail Clough and Duncan Jones from... Good evening. Good evening. The Laughter Factory. That's it. You got it one, man. My daughter came out blonde. Blonde. I did not work nine months to make a kid everyone thinks I'm the nanny of. <laughs> so, 25 years. Today. Yes, that's it today. Congratulations. 25 years. Can't believe we've lasted that long. It's amazing, isn't it? You still look normal. <laughs> So how did it happen? How did it get together? Um, well, we both had pretty dodgy jobs, didn't we? Well, I wouldn't say it was dodgy. I was a drummer in a good band. A good band. <laughs> you were dodgy. Yeah, you were, I was a DJ. You were working yeah. in dodgy nightclubs. Yeah, so I, I was a DJ I was working in dodgy nightclubs. Yeah. Yeah. He was the respectable end of it. <laughs> Actually, it's right. That reminds me. Do you know who Gail used to work with? No. Who did? You won't know because you're, you're, well, you're 11 <laughs> years old, aren't you? I am like, 11 years old. The Hitman and Her. Do you ever remember that? So the hitman no, was, <laughs> was Carly Minogue's, Carly Minogue's producer. Who else? Oh, Sonia. Stock Aitken Waterman. Stock Aitken oh. Waterman, yeah. Peter, Peter Waterman. Waterman. Yeah, I used to work on a lot of their gigs, yeah. So they have the... Blackpool and Warrington. Classic and, places. Yeah. So they used to have the hitman and her where, where he would talk and the, the, the music DJ going off and uh, what was the name? Michaela Strachan? Michaela Strachan, yeah. And Gail was the DJ on it. Yeah, and then I was the first DJ over the Berlin Wall. Wait. Wow. The very first one, yeah. Was it a German? It was me. Get on. Yeah, that's amazing. When was that? 1989, I think. <laughs> and China. And the first one into communist China. Really? Yeah. So yeah. something strange about you, isn't it? I was, the first, de- I was the first drummer in Dira. <laughs> 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 so was it music that brought you together? Were you just in the same yeah. place? Yeah, as you yeah, yeah. We were doing a lot of fashion shows, weren't we? It was just a, it could tell a the happy accident, too, isn't it? really. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Happy yeah. accident. I was sort of coming out of the band, you know, which I've been in for years, 20 odd years. Gail was finishing like the DJ sort the of thing. The nightclub side of it, And yeah. then we started helping out on little fashion shows and stuff like this and that was so bad <laughs> you know back in the uh, early, early 90s, 90s it, yeah. oh, that was so dreadful and we were trying to get these people out of trouble and, and get and get the gig and then we thought well we bored anyway what could what what we was a, really for ourselves we did it yeah and so we just bored if not of doing the same do. thing yeah. and then we thought well we'll i miss comedy you miss comedy yeah. you've worked in the industry and we just thought let's give it a go and 25 years later. <laughs> and you're still working together. I know, we've got killed each other, yeah. Being in love, it feels like, it feels like central heating, you know? You, you, you turn it on before guests come over and pretend it's like this all the time. <laughs> who's, your, who's your first artist then? Who's your first comedian? Uh, Noel James, Gary Skyner, Alan Bates. It's a bit mad. insane, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, Gary Skyner, who's a Liverpoolian guy, right. a very mainstream act. Black um, we, were, shows, we were originally booking mainstream acts because we didn't know the industry at all, you know. We, yeah, we my, didn't really know the difference between alter, what was yeah. quite, it was called alternative comedy then. It yeah. was actually an alternative to sexist, racist jokes. That's where the term alternative came from. Okay. But then wow. people kind of realised over 25 years that you're not supposed to tell those jokes anyway, so it's not called <laughs> alternative anymore. Yeah. It's just comedy. That's just comedy. It's just comedy, yeah. Just comedy, yeah. Thankfully. Yeah. But so, I, I'd like to take a step back. Yeah, I know on. you all know each other, so um, it, it, it seems really cosy. I don't know. I don't know actually. How do you, how do you know each other? Uh, I used to gay crash the gigs. <laughs> ah, <laughs> uh, you're you no, a couple of times. He actually yeah, comes out yeah. some of the yeah. 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 So I see music. You all have well, that in Duncan common. Duncan and I play bands together. Yeah. Yeah. We play in yeah. bands together yeah. with so other it's people. A, it's, it's quite incestuous, but in a good way. You yeah. Know? But it's really, it's quite a genius idea to tap into laughter. Like, what, what about, what's it about laughter that has made you, you know, well, made your business a success? Well, because all our comics write original material, so you're never listening to the same jokes. Like, when we first started with the mainstream acts, a lot of them would be telling the same gags. But then when we got into the guys, I mean, what was called the alternative scene, they were all writing original material. So you were always addicted to it. You never thought, oh God, you know, the same old thing. You know, every show was different. So you're always on tender hooks wondering what's going to happen next, which is great. It's addictive. I don't think at the time as well that the actual Dubai market was was quite ready for what we were trying to do. It was still a, a, like a, an expat outpost, really, Dubai. At that ah, time, it was like being at, you know, people the, couldn't the, be at the home. Incredible nightlife that exists today. It was a country club, wasn't it? The place we, like we were doing gigs. Our first gig um, 25 years ago was at the, the Hyatt Regency in Deira. 
Yeah. Which is the hotel in the top hotel at the time. Downhill since. Yeah, we knocked the star off it. And we did it. A lot of the people that came to the gig and the subsequent gigs after didn't quite get, you know, they, well, I don't, I don't get it. It's, it's not the gags I see on the TV or it's not that. It was alternative. It was alternative. So, so the, the, the artists well, we had you some had. dreadful gigs to start with. Oh, God, what was wrong. the worst one? Or don't you want to oh, tell me? Really? <laughs> the worst one was when we booked a clairvoyant, Derek Okora. <laughs> oh, no. And he was walking up to people on the front row and he was going, Cancer? Mm -hmm. And you were going, no. He's going, well, you will have. <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, that's and a joke. And it's a great, great episode of Phoenix Nights where yeah. they make fun of him and he, he comes out at the end and goes, I've only been punched twice tonight. Well, well he's an old mate of ours, isn't he? Uh, Neil Fitzmaurice. Neil Fitzmaurice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've known yeah. him for years he and years and years. He's one of the writers uh, on Justin that. Justin Morehouse we've had. And but yeah, we've been out yeah. with him a few times. Yeah. yeah. Actually, wasn't it, didn't Neil talk to you about this show? He's right with a bloke called, um, what's his name? Peter Kay. Peter Kay. Yeah, he about, did. About yeah, club. Yeah. What do you think, Dunga? Yeah. It'll, it'll work. Because you've played in loads of those clubs. There was a, a time when we had a lot of the people who'd appeared on Phoenix Nights, which was an incredibly popular program. Yeah, Probably more in the north, Midlands and north of England than the south, I think. Because it depicted working men's club life yeah, very, yeah. very well. Peter Kay is probably one of the biggest comedy icons in the UK. Rose with true. Dave Spikey and uh, Neil Fitz. Yeah, yeah. He was meant to be yeah. on an after factory. Yeah. Really? And he cancelled and got replaced by Frankie Boyle. No. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. I'm trying to eat healthier myself. I was at this diner before I came out here. I was getting a, they had a thing on the menu. It was called a protein scramble. I go, that sounds healthy. Then I read the ingredients. Basically, it was an egg omelet with chunks of chicken meat in it. It's a chicken omelet. Which is wrong. I mean, you don't take the eggs out of a chicken and then cook the chicken and put it in the eggs. That's, that's too much chicken. Who the hell is back there cooking some kind of chicken cereal killer? I mean, that's an omelet that spans two generations of chicken. That's, I mean, that's not breakfast, that's a vendetta. You know what I mean? Who's, who's ordering breakfast? Tony Soprano? Listen, I want the chicken dead. I want his family dead. I want his unborn babies dead. I don't want any chickens coming back at me after we take care of that thing. You know? It's crazy. I was talking to Damien earlier, and he's my living thesaurus and or <laughs> all, all things. If I need to learn anything, Damien is my person. Oh, how cool so am I? He was saying that all the biggest comedians have worked with you. Oh, we're so lucky. We've been so lucky. So, so um, I don't want to name drop, but oh, let's go on. ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Which, um, you know, who, who have you worked with? Um, Russell Peters, Michael McIntyre, Jack Whitehall, Kevin Bridges, oh, Sarah really Milligan, like Michael, Lee Mack, Mickey Flanagan, Dara O'Brien. Um, Jeannie Asheray. Oh, um, amazing. Ed Burn. I think if you think of it, yeah, anyone most people, that you've that has made it to... Jason Manford. Like, I forgot Jason. <laughs> yeah. All the UK comedians. Anyone who that's made it. We do get them on the way up. I've seen some of them On the change. way down? <laughs> yeah, we've met them on the way down as well. I mean, Jason's got a few shows here recently, hasn't he? Yeah. He's, he's, yeah. he's, he's, he's still a very strong very funny comic, man. even though his career takes him in. He's a great, he's a good singer. Yeah. So he's, he's got several careers. We're well, definitely punching with him, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, Joe Lysett's well. another one that we had quite, the, you know. And Junior Asheray is a, uh, was also, or is she's it? She's gone to America. Yeah, she's, she's really, she's taking York. over yeah. in the States. Yeah, So that's, yeah. that's really. She's doing it ever so well. That's epic. Yeah. Old enough to know better. Had a birthday recently because I'm now half to two thirds of the way through my life. So with it being your 25th anniversary, you don't have to tell me, you can hint. Got anything planned big for your 25th year? Um, with all just, your mates? We're just thankful that um, we can get comics on the plane. I mean, we've got people coming, everyone's coming from America at the moment wow. because we can't book out of the UK or Ireland. We've run out of European acts, so we've got people coming from America. So. 
that's quite a huge expense for us. You know, the comics are more expensive and the flights are a lot more expensive as well. So we were saying earlier, you were asking about the London project, what, what it is. Yeah. It's basically the essence of London. It's right, not yeah. London, it's London. So it's, it's uh, Old Compton Street, it's so uh, House kind of vibe, whatever. Mm. Obviously, you know, the, the comedy store. And you guys have worked with those guys for what? We worked with those guys for 20 years. years. We're it's still great friends, yeah. The relationship, he, yeah. they were over last week, weren't I can tell you how it began was very fortuitous. It was just myself and Gail we just happened to be in London. At the same time, um, I think we were looking for bands or something at the time. And Gail said, I'd be in the comedy store. It's not far from where we are, Leicester Square. Leicester Square, yeah. So we, mm -hmm. blind ambition, just went and knocked on their office door. You didn't ask and, you to get there, And just said, we'd like to sit and talk to you about possibility of doing uh, gigs in Dubai and UAE uh, and they jumped at it really. That's definitely an times. opportunity now. Yeah. When you get someone like Don Ward who owns the store is an icon. Yeah. In is the Alex com Ferguson a comedy? A comedy, yeah. Yeah. I mean, is the Alex Ferguson? Well, he's a cheat. Never thought that, yeah. Leave that one. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Alex. All, really. um, and he very kindly came over and um, with, with some of his crew and some great people, Charlotte and Simon, guys. And then we started getting this massive lift in the standard of what, yeah. what we were trying to book. We were trying to book blind from Edinburgh, right, the festival okay. and stuff like that. And, and there's some junk. Uh, when I was the last was really time with Edinburgh, the festival was like 89, 88. Yeah. And they're saying then, is it time to trim the fringe? Because it, it was dreadful. It, yeah. yeah. But, and I then mean, they did. I went to Montreal, where we, we went together, went down. and the standard was just so much different. Montreal festival is great It's curated at Montreal, you, you know, Edinburgh is about ripping comics off really. Yeah. What they, they do is they just hire space, and comics hire the space, and not try and sell tickets. Yeah. And you get a lot of rich kids having a go. parents are having a go at it, and the public are confused, they yeah. don't know. What's the Irish festival you guys go to? Kilkenny. Oh, Kilkenny. Yeah, you just have too many... Because every time you come back, you just got the biggest smiles on your faces yeah. going, you just come back there. Too many of the same comics now, unfortunately, there. Okay. The yeah. best festival really is the Montreal one. They don't put the same acts one year from the next. It's and invite so only. It's invite. Well. Okay. With the but comics, it's that's only. like the French, isn't it, being funny? Is that possible? I know. I know that's so strange, isn't it? Well, the, 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 the strange thing is, or the interesting thing about that particular festival, it uh, has two weeks in French language, and then it has two weeks in English. They're being proposed to a little boost to the ego, isn't it? Which is why every now and then I go on a date with an illegal immigrant. When you're um, booking, obviously when you first started, you probably weren't so particular, but how do you, how do you book acts now? Well, at the moment, we really depend on our 20 years experience and our network of comics, because the comics will suggest somebody. And, and recommend. You know, yeah, and you know, they've really helped us out a lot, particularly the last few months, because we couldn't, we've not left Dubai for two years. Right. And have you ever booked somebody and thought, we've kind of discovered, like a gold mine. I haven't. Joe, Joe Lysett, actually. <laughs> Joe Lysett and Jack Whitehall, I would say. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah we, when he first saw them. Didn't he, didn't he try his going out? He get, was get your just first brilliant. Kid? But I, the great thing about comedy and like music is that people do make it quite older in life. So it's quite nice to see people like Mickey Flanagan and John Bishop having careers that really start in their forties. That, 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 that was, if I remember rightly, that was the Crown Plaza, wasn't it? When he did it. We were at a yeah. club there called Zinc. Zinc, yeah. We were there for a number of years. Believe it or not, we would get nearly four hundred people in there on a Wednesday yeah. night at one time. Yeah, we speak Joe in the nineties, well, yeah. 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 Um And then when we were doing, you know, a lot of good gigs in Dubai, then we went to Abu Dhabi. We have a, a smaller but very loyal uh, following. There. Then, we, then we took the, uh, the gigs to Bahrain, to Qatar, Oman, um, Oman a few times. Yeah. Uh, lost money in everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> we can lose money anywhere. Yeah. Uh, if, I, if I had half a penny, every time a promoter had told me the lost money, I'd have ninety-seven pounds fifty-six <laughs> and a half pence. Old white people love to complain about immigrants in North America. We're losing this country to immigrants coming in here and taking our jobs. Like, yeah, you wanted to open a kebab shop. I just came in and stole your kebab shop idea from his culture. I was gonna open Earl's kebab shop 
Ben Hilbin's Ali's kebab shop down the street. Who are you going to trust the kebab from? So there's a, there's a tour on next this week. Yeah, Starting this week. Tomorrow. Tell us, oh, tomorrow. tell us about this then. What's going yeah, on? Um, we've got two acts who are coming at America. We've got an Irish act who plays Vegas. So he's going to be quite a talent because he's got all the charm of the Irish, but he's got the American style, the professionalism and the slickness that comes with American comics. Right. Mike Manorino, he won the Bob Hope. I don't know if anybody's oh, um, yeah. old enough to remember Bob Hope, but he was well, like huge, no. wasn't he? Bob Hope, no hope. No, not, not Let me write well, that no. down. <laughs> <It's your letter. laughs> Maybe Google can help Hope me. Comedy Award two years ago. And then we've got Corey Mike Ellis, who's just a legend. Yeah. Cool. I mean, it's... it's it's incredible when you think about the problems happening at the moment that Gail's booking the, the, the shows, that we're still managing to get people to, to get into Dubai safely and get them in a safe environment in the clubs. We work very closely with the uh, Dubai government, team. DTCM. Completely safe, uh, safe as it can be. No, but comedy, thankfully for us, is the most perfect thing because people are sat in a chair and they're not moving. It's mingling that creates the stress, doesn't yeah. it? So you, so in our preamble before we, we we put the cameras on, you were saying that you've, you've got comedians from the Eastern Bloc countries and Fantastic. stuff like that. Fantastic. Yeah. Because I can't like, work like out how does that work. Like four out on steroids. <laughs> but really, four yeah. out. Yeah, 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 for really four out, yeah. So really. Yeah, we had a Romanian guy, we had a Latvian guy, um, Greek we guy. We read a Greek guy, we read a Portuguese. It's been just such a it's all in beautiful English. It's so diverse. It's yeah, so diverse. And these guys have just got great. a different voice. Great. But is it funny? I don't know. Of course it's funny. It's funny. We wouldn't oh, have no, any of it. Well, Damien does have a very particular sense oh, of no, humour. That's the great thing about but, comedy. Yeah. People do have a, a, a discussion about it. At our yeah. gigs, we always have a little after party. Uh, we talk to the guests and the comics who are coming and hang out. And when you talk to someone at one table, they have a completely uh, yeah. in, a different, experience different experience than someone on another table. So you get the feedback from them yeah. as well then? Oh, Absolutely. That's the great yeah. thing about the Laughter Factory is we speak to our customers directly. Yeah. I mean, obviously we have a massive online presence, but we take the online live. You know, we want to listen to our customers. We want to hear what they think. And the great thing about bringing the Eastern Bloc countries, well, sorry, the European acts, is that we've had such great feedback. I mean, they're all rebooked for 18 months' oh, time. Brilliant. Yeah, huge so, success. So, that's fantastic. This tour that's on now, how do people get tickets? What do they do? Yeah. Where, 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 what nights are you on? Well, always. So, yeah, I always well, say, all the details are on the laughterfactory.com. Yeah. Right. That's uh, it. It's a monthly gig. Yeah. We managed to do it monthly with pretty much. 25 years, which is, I think, the longest running gig in the world. <laughs> yeah, pretty good. Yeah. Possibly one of them. You and the mousetrap. Yeah, um, the, the mousetrap mouse 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 comedy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it's, and there's so um, much going on. You've got so many different comedians. Yeah. You've got Michael McIntyre coming back, I think. No, I can't afford him anymore. Oh, you can't? He's coming back. We're still friends. I'll definitely meet up with him, but we can't oh, afford him. still oh, friends yeah. with a lot we're of guys. We just do small yeah. shows. I mean, the great thing about the Laughter Factory is you get, you're not watching it on a screen. You get to see the comet. You, you get to see the whites of their eyes, the fear. You get to see them panic at times. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> the, 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 next, the next time you've got somebody over, we'll all come down and have a look and have a chat with them, chat with yeah. you, so, and ask them what they think of the audiences in Dubai. Yeah. Let's spin it around that way. Absolutely, no. Well, on, on that note, guys, happy 20 25th birthday. Oh, thank, thank you, you very much, Mother. Happy, Happy 25th. 25th. Our comedy fans, thanks for supporting the gig. It's um, been a long one. It's been a long one. But a funny Congratulations. one. Congratulations. Yeah. Gail, Duncan, thank you very much indeed. Thank you guys. Thank thanks, you guys. guys. Great to be here.